Hi everyone, I just want to talk a bit about the flesh and the spirit. So um, this I think I'll call the cross is the end of our flesh and the beginning for our spirit. So um, as usual I'm going to show verses, I'm not going to do a whole lot of commentary but um, just groups of verses with some context. So um, God is finished with the old creation there is nothing good in it um, yes he created it but it's corrupted so let's have a look at some verses Romans seven eighteen. for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not so there's nothing good in us Romans um, or in our old man, in our flesh. Romans 8, 7 to 8, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So anyone who's not born again is in the flesh completely. They can't please God. Uh, Romans three ten to 18, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used a seat, the poison of asps is is in their lips, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So that describes fallen mankind um, without God, and they can only come to God by the drawing of the Holy Spirit and um, the gift of faith and not rejecting that gift um, and in Genesis we can see um, just how quickly it became obvious to God that um, you know the, the fallen nature so Genesis 6 5 and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and Genesis 8, 20 to 21, this was after Noah left the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done so yeah the, the main line I wanted you to see in that was um, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth so we're born with nothing good um, our old nature is there's just nothing good in it but when we believe the gospel um, we are crucified and buried with Christ and our reborn spirit is raised to new life in Christ Jesus in Romans 6 4 therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so also we should walk in newness of life so we're leaving that old corrupted flesh the old nature behind at the cross we're cut off from it it's dead and we're raised to new life in Christ Jesus we're not zombies we have Christ's life in us giving us life Romans 8 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you we have life in us. 
the life of Jesus Christ. Um, the old nature is still with us, but we are walked. Uh, we are to walk. In, um, sorry, hang on. But we are to walk after the Spirit. Uh, Romans eight five to six. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have these two warring things. Um, I didn't put that verse in, but you know that we know that the flesh wars against the spirit. Um, it's we have both the spirit and the flesh, but the the spirit um, puts to death. Um, the sin nature within us and hold it in the place of death. Romans 8, 10 and 13 And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And we know each other after the spirit, not the flesh. Second Corinthians five fourteen to seventeen, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they should that they which live should henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, hence know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Um, so we, from when we're born again, we, we know no man after the flesh. We know each other in the spirit once we're born again. And that's um, part of uh, recognizing a brother in Christ by the testimony, um, by the, th the fact that they believe the same gospel as us. We know each other after the spirit because we, we have the spirit, the Holy Spirit, because we believe the gospel. Um, and we are to have no confidence in the flesh. It's supposed to be dead. We're supposed to reckon it dead. So we can't resurrect it and use it um, to accomplish things um, and to think that we're strong in, 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 in our flesh. We have to, we're to have no confidence in the flesh. We can't trust it to do anything good. And if you do, you'll find out after a while that no it actually fails all the time and we're to count all things but loss uh, in order to gain Christ Jesus everything that is not Christ is dung you have to be able to let go of everything that is not Jesus if there's something that you just can't let go of um, it's going to hold you back. We, we, all we can have is Jesus and his blood. Everything else is a loss. Everything else is dung. Philippians 3, 3 to 10. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Our confidence is in Jesus, not in our flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man, sorry, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecution of the church, touching the righteousness of the which is in the law, blameless, but what things were gain to me, those I counted for loss, no, loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, 
for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in, in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Um, so we want to be made conformable unto his death, that is putting, making sure that our flesh is, is kept dead, um, that our old self is placed in the tomb and kept there with the door shut. And in that place, in the tomb, we can, we can rest because there's nothing expected of our flesh anymore. It's, it's done for, like there's nothing else for it to do. It just needs to lay there while Jesus' life in us is the thing that produces anything after we're born again. Anything that lasts, anything that is good, it's through the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us. Um, we are circumcised. Our flesh is cut off, so... Um, that's what circumcision in the Old Testament um, represented. It represented the, the cutting off of the strength of man. Um, God took Israel through many trials um, so that they would trust him. And circumcision was just a picture of them in weakness, um, being having their strength cut off and having... God fight their battles for them. Um, if they ever tried to do it in their own way, they would lose. And um, it was when they would trust God to fight that they would win. And so we are the true circumcision. We are cut off from our flesh. It was cut off at the cross. So we're buried in baptism with Christ and raised to life in him. Colossians 2, 8-12 Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Okay, um, um, I just wanted to show you those verses and the, some of the context around them. And... I think I might be doing another one, another video, more where I just talk about stuff rather than going through verses. So we'll see. That might be the weekend when I do that. All right. I hope that blesses you. Talk to you later. Bye.